all you're doing is you're padding st- st- uh, statistics. You know, you're putting people on that have COVID-19. If they didn't have it, you're making the death rate for New York City a lot higher than it should be. To be honest with you, all of the death certificates they're writing COVID on all of the death certificates, whether they had a positive test, whether they didn't. So I, I think, that, you know, again, this is my personal opinion. I, I think like the mayor in our city, they're looking for federal funding, and the more they put COVID on a death certificate, the more they can ask for federal funds. So I think it's 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 political. Welcome to Black Spring. And today, I have a story that kind of takes a look at, or takes a step back and examines the numbers or the books. And so far, we have even some of the top or the task force officials that have questioned these numbers and actually questioning the the data and asking for ultimately transparency. So today, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you to this segment of Black Spring with Autumn. And of course, our story will come from the vetted source. It will come from the New American. I thank everybody for joining me on this segment of Black Spring with Autumn. Now, today's story, we have a story that's written by Selwyn Duke, who entitles this as Media Lies About the Pandemic, and they're perpetuating lockdowns and destroying our nation. Quote, if only the media told the truth, end quote, sounds like a wish straight from the Wizard of Oz, desirable but fanciful, many things would be different if it did. One being that we wouldn't currently be crashing our economy and perhaps collapsing our civilization. And with the historic or hysteric blunder call, quote, lockdown, end quote, policy. So asserted American thinkers Jack Hellner on Wednesday in a piece presenting the following startling facts. 1,603 counties, 52% of the U.S. in total have zero deaths. 447 counties, which is 14% of the U.S. counties, total have one death. 443 counties have 14% of the country, that is, in total have two to five deaths. So, 80% of American counties have five or fewer crowd disease deaths for a total of 2,662 out of a nation's approximately 84,000, an inflated number. Do note that the casualties from this virus or just 3.2% of the total, yet they're locked down just like the 20% of counties that have the 96.8% of the total. This is about as rational as insisting rural counties have the same number of traffic lights per year or per per square mile as New York City. Now, despite this, supposed, quote, experts and some Democrat governors are saying, keep the economy in depression until we have a vaccine, which may never come, end quote, Helner writes, quote, if the public saw the truthful numbers, people would be glad to lead their lives, their free lives again, end quote. Note that no pandemic vaccine has ever been created One may be useless by the time it's developed, as by then we may have achieved herd immunity or the pandemic may have mutated and vaccines aren't completely effective. For example, the CDC reported that the 2017-2018 season flu vaccine was only 40% effective. Hellner got his statistics from the Heritage Foundation, which, relating the infections concentrated 
Nature also tells us that as of May 4th, just 10 states account for 70% of all U.S. cases and 77% of all deaths. Together, New York and New Jersey alone account for 38% of all cases and 48% of those total pandemic deaths. As the first chart shows, the 30 counties with the most pandemic cases account for 50% of all the cases in the U.S. and 57% of all deaths. That is, just 1% of the counties in the U.S. are responsible for half of the country's pandemic cases and more than half of the deaths. Of those 30 counties, 24 in the Northeast Corridor between Philadelphia and Boston, the passageway served by a commuter railway system that runs through Manhattan, Overall, just 11% of the counties in the U.S. contain nearly 95% of all the pandemic deaths. Now question, if there were a disease mainly ravaging rural America, would state governments shut down the cities as part of the response? Hellner also reminds us how Dr. Deborah Burke said that, quote, there is nothing from the CDC that I can trust, end quote. And that the CDC, as Helner paraphrases it, quote, inflating the pandemic case rate by 25%. So with that said, I will continue with this segment. Now, Fauci once said the whole country should be locked down, claims they shouldn't. Big surprise, he warned not to be, quote, cavalier in thinking that children are completely immune to the virus's deleterious effects, end quote. Huh? Is any group, quote, completely immune, quote, to any contagious disease? Here are the facts. The flu caused 358 child deaths during the 2009-2010 winter season. Yet only a handful of kids have died from the pandemic virus, which means their mortality rate, quote, approaches zero, end quote, as Senator Paul put it. But do we shut down schools over the flu? Did you recommend doing so in 2009 or 2010, Dr. Fauci? Why not? Now some more facts. The Spanish flu pandemic, 1918-1910, killed 675,000 Americans adjusted for population. This today equates to a bit more than 2 million dead. The Asian flu, the quote, Asian flu, end quote, pandemic of 1957, killed 116,000 Americans. Today equates to approximately 223,000. The, quote, Hong Kong flu, end quote, pandemic of 1968, killed at least 100,000 Americans. Today, equates to 164,915. Yet we didn't shut down and crash the economy. Why not, Dr. Fauci? Also consider that Sweden never locked down and Georgia opened up almost three weeks ago. Yet Sweden is faring at least as well as we are and better than many locked down European countries. And Georgia has experienced a continued decline in virus hospitalizations. This is unsurprising since a recent study found that lockdowns save no lives, yet Fauci insists that returning to normalcy would spike the pandemic infection rate. Okay, well, so what? First, most people infected with mild to no symptoms and infection among the non-vulnerable while protecting the vulnerable establishes herd immunity. So relevant here is the infection rate, but the hospitalization and mortality rates. Second, quote, flattening the curve, end quote, only widens it. So there aren't necessarily fewer deaths. There could be more. They're just spread out over a longer period of time, the issue. Flattening the curve also means flattening the economy, which will likely cause for far more poverty and stress-related disease and death long term. Apropos to this, research finds that, as an example, South Africa's lockdown will cost 29 times more deaths than the pandemic would have. I explored this matter in, quote, why accepting 2 million pandemic deaths may be better than a national lockdown. Helder points out, though, 
that the left, a set weaned on hate America first ideology is getting exactly what it wants via fear mongering and consequent lockdowns, the further destruction of the United States. Somewhere, Marx and Mao must be laughing. I'd like to thank everybody for joining me on this segment of Black Spring with Autumn. Now, from, from of course, you have numbers there, you have statistics, and of course, by now, you've seen your own municipalities and your own states handle this information or even report that information in a range of different ways. So let me know what you think in the comments. Do you think that this is a bit of a, still a case of the cure being worse than the pandemic? Do you think that this measure, that the measures of the lockdowns and the stay at home orders are prolonging the suppression of the economy? And if you would, as always, I would like for you to just take a look around and let me know what your comments and concerns are in relation to this story. You can like, you can share, you can subscribe or even unlike, but let me know what your comments and concerns are. And as always, I'd like to thank everybody for joining me on this segment of Black Spring with Autumn.